Now, coming back to the message which you're getting here, it's clearly indicating that there is a kind of a virus or a spyware which is infecting your computer, and because of that, your personal information is getting at risk. So oh, wow. what I'm going to do is, you can see that black window on your screen, right? Uh huh. I'm gonna go ahead and run a short scan on that black window. That's gonna let us know what exactly is going on and why your computer ended up with this warning. All right? Yeah. So here we go. Now running dir slash s, and let's see what happens. Let's see what magic comes up at the end of this. I've got the mic muted, of course. Let's see what happens. Now, while the scan is running, James, I would like to know from you, you use this computer. What do you do on it usually? Uh, just, just mostly, yeah, just internet, internet stuff. We, uh, we have a business here, but we don't use this machine for that. It's a, just a personal machine. We, okay. We have a. a so few, a, we have a. We have you a, go through your. So we have a funeral director's business here. Okay, so this computer is generally used for emails and if you do any social networking yeah, and general yeah. web browsing, right? Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit of Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Tell me if you happen to download something off the internet in the past few days. Yeah, I, I, I have been. I did download some some movies um, just just recently. All right. Clamp. Oh, what's this? Clamp eye. Well. Oh. So you can see the scanned results over here, correct? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't understand what they mean, but yeah. Well, it says Clampy Trojan found IP address compromised, 94% infected, network access protection damaged. Tell me, do you understand what exactly all these things mean? Oh, no, I've got no idea. Let me tell you. See, firstly, it says Clampy Trojan found. Second, your IP address is compromised. Third, it's already 94% infected. And lastly, your network access protection is damaged. Tell me, do you know what is an IP address, James? Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let me help you. See, if I tell you the most basic way, whenever you are using the internet, I'm sure even you realize that apart from you, there are probably billions of people using the internet all over the world, right? Yeah. So now, when some people are using the internet, actually some people are not so good and some people are good. So, when you want to recognize a person when they are using the internet as an individual, that is where an IP address is used. It's your online identity, okay? Ah, I see. No matter what devices you use, be it a cell phone, be it a tablet, iPad, Kindle, laptop, desktop, even your Wi-Fi router or modem. All these devices are connected to your IP address the moment you use them. So if there is a problem with your IP address, then at some point, all your devices face the same problem. Now your IP address is getting compromised with. What that means is that apart from you, there are other people who are having a direct access upon it. Oh, I see. If you look on the screen once again, on that black window, uh -huh. you can see over here, it says active connections, right? Yeah. Now, below these active connections, you see over here local address? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
This James is your IP address. It is 192.168.254.206. Uh, That's your IP address, okay. and apart from that, the digits at the back of your IP address are indicating your different online activities. Uh, yeah. Now, apart from your IP address, you can see over here several foreign addresses, correct? Yeah, I see those, yeah. Tell me, have a look at those foreign addresses and tell me if you recognize any of them. Y yes, I do. I, I, which one? I recognize three of them. Um, the La Tell me which one. The La Cinema. That, that's a, um, uh, a, media, a, a media stream thing that's connected to my network downstairs like for, for storing movies and things on. This one, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah. I recognize You're that. talking about this one, correct? Yeah. I recognize that, but none okay. of Okay, apart from that, of any of those? No. None of them? No. Okay, so if we remove these three out of the list, that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven addresses which you do not recognize, correct? Uh, yeah. Now, these addresses which you do not recognize, they are a huge trouble for you. Why so? Because these foreign addresses, when they get connected to your IP address, they are not asking you for that. They do not need your permission. They are unauthorized know, people. And when they get established with you, they get the complete freedom to go ahead and access all your devices they can track your internet activity and I have to warn you about this James sometimes these activities also result in identity theft oh no, don't if I tell that. you how yeah. if I tell you how let's say one of these foreign addresses they go ahead and using your IP address they log on to some online shopping website like Amazon and they make a purchase from there now, when somebody wants to verify that who made that purchase, it's going to appear as if you were the person who made that purchase, when in reality, you did not do it. Same way, yeah, same if these again. people go ahead and do any kind of fraudulent activity using your IP address, again, it will be reflecting as if you were the person who did that, when in reality, you never had a connection to it. So, basically, these people they are replicating and impersonating you over the internet and I'm pretty sure you realize that is something which you would never want right never exactly now the reason behind why these activities are happening is clampy Trojan have you heard about it before ever do you know what is that I've got, uh, no, no idea at all no idea was, I, I've heard of Trojan no I, I've heard of Trojans before but I don't know what they are no problem. Let me show you what exactly the kind of a Trojan is clampy on Google. You'll understand everything. Go ahead and read this. Clampy is a man, man in the... Oh, wow. Uh, Contrary from a compromised computer third party. Clamp, clampy was first observed in 2007. Fixed computers running Windows. Primary target... Uh, wow! And uh, I have got I, I've got that. Uh, that's not good. I don't I don't like don't like look at that exactly. at all. Now comes a very important question for you, James. Do you happen to do any kind of online banking, shopping, or do you pay your bills or taxes online on any of your devices? Yes, I do. I do. I do. I do all of those things. You do all of them. Yeah. Okay, James. As in say, this I, case, one I, thing which I am going to strongly recommend you. Yeah. After this thing is fixed yeah. out, you have to make sure you go ahead and change all your passwords. Be it your email, be it your Facebook. 
especially your banking, shopping, whatever accounts you have wherein you require a password for logging in. Change all those passwords, all right? Yeah, in including my business account. Exactly. The reason why I ask you to do that is Clampy is very much renowned. It goes ahead and it transfers oh. encryptions. Do you know what's an encryption? Uh, some sort of code, isn't it? Uh, yes, actually, you know, whenever you are typing in any kind of password, instead of your real password, you see stars, circles, or you see blocks, but you never see your real password, right? Yeah. That is what's an encryption. So basically, Clampy is transferring your passwords to these foreign addresses which you don't recognize. So just to be on a safe side, do make sure that you change all the passwords, alright? Yeah. Sounds quite serious. Now, just one more thing which I need to go ahead and check. If you remember, the scan was telling us that your network is 94% infected, correct? Yeah, so I, I saw that, yeah. So I'm going to just go ahead and have a look at those infections now, alright? And James, apart from this computer, what other devices do you have at your home? Uh, we, we have, we have a, another, another computer that we use for business. Okay. And, and, the, and the media player thing, the Lassie drive thing that we have downstairs. All right. And what about cell phones, iPads, tablets, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we've got the usual tablets and phones and things, yeah. All right. James, when was the last time you made a, uh, you made a change in your computer? Like, did you change your hard disk any time uh, recently I, or anything like that? I, I, I did... Do a what do they call it again? Um, restore thing about three days ago. Okay. Two days back, you did that. Yeah. All right. And did you do it yourself, or you got someone to do it for you? No, a friend, a friend of mine did it for me. He, uh, he, he uh, we, we, the the machine was running very very slowly, and he said he would run some software or something. To sort it out, it seems to have come right. Back. That's why I asked. That is why I asked you. Like you told me, your computer is around six years old, but the speed it, it's giving out is kind of good. That's why I asked you. Ah, uh, see. Okay. Now, James, have a look on your screen. You can see I'm currently viewing the security part of your computer. Correct? Uh, yes. If you're here. It's telling you Microsoft Security Essentials, Virus Protection is on, Spyware and Unwanted Software Protection is also on. But, if you notice over here, Network Access Protection Agent Service is not running, it is off, right? Is that why, is that why the updates don't work? Uh, it's, it, this Network Access Protection has nothing to do with the updates. Yeah, but because they're not this working. network access protection has the network access protection has everything to do with these problems which you are facing right now. I see. What's happening is you are running a security for the computer that is Microsoft Security Essentials. Uh -huh. So your computer at some point is having a protection, but a job of a network access protection is to secure your home network. If I tell you what exactly is happening, let's take an example. Let's say, James, you are going out of your house for a trip, a business trip, let's say, and when you go out, you close the door behind you, but you forgot to put the lock on that door. So in this case, will your house be safe and secure? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, no, of course not. Exactly. So when you are having Microsoft Security Essentials up on your computer, that means you are closing the door behind you. But when you don't have the network access protection running, that means you do not have 
a lock on that door. This is the reason why you are still getting infected, okay? Now, without wasting your time, let's straightforwardly get to the solution so that this thing can be fixed as soon as possible, all right? Uh -huh. Now, before I let you know the solution, James, you need to understand one thing very clearly. The problem is not in your computer. Your computer is okay. Problem is in your IP address and that is what needs to be fixed, all right? Yeah. What I mean by that is, even if you go ahead and throw this computer out, you buy a new computer, the moment you get it home, after maybe one or two weeks, you will end up having the same problems on your brand new machine as well. Because your problem is not the computer, it's your IP address. And you cannot change your IP address. Alright? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, to fix your IP address, you need to get in touch with a level 7 network IP specialist. Yeah. How to get a hold yeah. of them? These technicians work only and only online because they need to work on your IP address and your home network. They are not present physically. They will be working with you online just the way like I am working right now. And they would be needing approximately 60 to 90 minutes to go ahead and fix everything for you. Yeah, you what they do is, yeah. first of all, they provide you with a regular cleanup and a tune-up service on the computer itself. Then, you get a virus removal, spyware removal, malware removal. And a clampy Trojan removal. This will be done not only on the computer but also on your IP address. Then they're gonna move on. And you remember those foreign addresses, right? Yeah, I was, I was worried about them, yeah. They are going to be blocked out. What that means is once they are blocked out, there is no way they can ever come back. Oh, Along with that, they will be uncompromising your IP address. Whatever damages your computer has gone through, those damages will be repaired out. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little bad with typing. So, after repairing all these damages, your computer, your IP address will be completely safe and secure. And your identity will be completely protected. Yeah. Along with that, you also need to get a network access protection because yours is currently damaged. Network access protection is something which protects you against viruses, against malwares, spywares, and adwares, also Trojans. Moreover, it gives you three layer of protection that will be for your online banking when you do shopping it will protect your credit card information all the passwords which are up on your screen moreover you know sometimes when you are paying a bill or a tax online or for some financial websites sometimes it asks you to verify yourself by putting in your ID number or your social security number correct yes so, it's going to make sure that when you are <coughs> typing in any of this information, either your banking, either your credit card information, your passwords, or your social security number, nobody else apart from you will be able to access it. That is the job of a network access protection. Are you sure? Secondly, yeah. Yeah, sure. this protection is going to be available for all your devices because it's present on your network, not on your computer. So whatever device you will be using for your internet, be it a cell phone, tablet, iPad, Kindle, laptop, desktop, all those devices are covered under this network access protection. Moreover, it's transferable. So even if you go ahead and buy a new computer, any new device itself, 
you will be easily getting this protection even on your other device all right yeah 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 now when we come to the charges just for the fixation of your ip address there is going to be a one time charge by the technician that will be of $350 wow along with that you need to get the protection as well in this scenario you have three options that how long you want it for if you want it for one year if you want it for three years or if you want it for five years if you want it for one year that costs you additional two hundred dollars if you want it for three years that costs you additional four hundred dollars and if you want it for five years that costs you additional six hundred dollars uh, well, well along with this James sorry yeah go ahead you were saying something yeah I was just saying ahead. that uh, that's, ra that's rather expensive I, I could do I could possibly do the one year so you could possibly go for the one year itself yeah okay let me tell you one more thing James when you are getting this protection along with it you also get support like let's say if you get the protection for three years let's say after along with this you will be getting the security also you get a guarantee for three years if you happen to face any kind of trouble on any of your computers oh God, or your devices <laughs> she's very persistent feel free to give a call to these technicians directly on their toll free number Right now, they'll be providing you with a customer ID. So, provide them that customer ID when you contact them in future and tell them what problem you are facing. They are going to take care of that problem for the coming three years without any extra charges because they provide you a guarantee you will not face this problem. If you do, call them up, tell them the customer ID and they will fix it for free. This guarantee is going to be sent to you as a legal document and that legal document is going to be sent to you over your email. All right? Yeah. So you can tell me how long the protection suits you. The one year, three years, or the five years. Yeah. Can I ask you a question first, please? Sure. Yeah, this, this network access protection thing. Could, could you show me that again? Mm -hmm. Sure. Hold on. So, if you have a look on your screen, James, these are all the examples which you have for at the which are available with the uh, Walmart store. Yeah. This one is for six months. Yes. This one is for three years. Two to seven nine nine. And yeah. this one is for four years. Yeah, yeah. Th that's not what I was asking. What what I asked was, you know, that network access protection thing uh, you were showing me that it was turned off. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That that's the place. Yeah. Um, can I just show you? Just click, click. Uh, does that not does not not just happen when you connect with a corporate network? See here. I'm sorry. See see, see this this here. Could you read that for me? Right. Just read it through. Sure. It says network access protection is a platform that network administrators can use to help protect the security of a network. When you connect to a corporate network that uses NAP, your computer what, is checked what's, what's to make sure that it has the required software and settings. Yes. And yes. that the software and settings are up to date. Yes. If anything is missing or outdated, your computer can be automatically updated. Your network access might be limited during that time. Yeah. But usually this process happens quickly, yes. after which full network access is restored. Right, thank you very much for reading that for me. Thank you. That's okay. So, but I'm not connected to a corporate network, so why do I need network access protection? See, when you are not connected to a corporate network, that is something which is completely different. However, well, I'm, I'm sure you must have heard about all the securities going on in the market, right? Yeah, but I'm not. But I'm not connected to a corporate network. I am not connected to a corporate network. 
Yes, you are not connected to a corporate so, network. So, that is so, your personal network, right? Yeah, so, do, so why do I need this then? Even when you are using a personal network, what makes you think that you do not need a security for it? When um, you are going ahead using the internet all the time, big, big, you know that, yeah. like, uh, don't confused. mind, but you told me that you were, you were watching online porn movies, correct? Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, so, you know, websites like these are full of infections. When a person like you and me, we go through them, we click on any kind of link and we enjoy for a few mo minutes or so, but within that time, we would never know if those links, if those videos are actually sending us infections. Yeah. Mostly, 90% of the porn websites are full of infections. Even apart from that, I'm sure you must have noticed, whenever you go online, you get some particular advertisements. They keep on appearing on your screen, don't really go away. Or you get some links. If you click on them, they take you to a completely different web page, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. So, some of them, not all of them, but some of them are in a way if a person like you and me we click on a link like that or even when we want to remove them from our screen we click on the X which is present on them the moment we do it they start sending infections into our computer using our computer these infections move on to our IP address and that is how all these things start happening oh, I see yeah could, could you explain that again about IP addresses yes. I'm a bit confused about that as well sure when you are using more than one device on a same network, uh, let's say like on your on your Wi-Fi, uh -huh. you must be connecting your cell phones on it, you must be connecting your other computer on it, everything, right? Yeah. So what happens is that when we are connecting more than one device on the same network, still, when you are using internet, you have to be recognized as an individual person, even if you are just searching through Google, because like right now, there are a lot of cyber crimes going on. So when someone wants to recognize you as a person, they will trace your IP address upon which the activity you were doing. IP address traces time, the duration, and all of your internet activities. So when somebody from the higher authorities wants to trace out that at this point of time this activity is being done by which person they will look for the IP address using your IP address they can trace out that that IP address belongs to you so it will be coming upon your name would that be my wide area network address or my local area network address That would be not only your uh, WAN or your LAN, that is something which is completely different. Like you are talking about the connections which you're getting from your internet provider, right? Yeah, well, but you, you, you showed me that net, what was that, net, 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 net start or net start or something? Right. And, and, that, and that showed my, my, inter, my sort of, my local address here, my, my local address. Yeah? Right, because that is a local address which belongs to you. You are seen as a local person. Yeah, there, there, Foreign addresses yeah, for something. Yeah, yeah, there it is. See, this this is my. Yeah. Yeah. So so so. What's that got to do with my? You are the basic user. You are the basic user of your internet, correct? Yeah. Take it this way. Yeah. So when you are the basic user of your internet, your network detects you as a local user because you're almost a regular person, right? Uh huh. Now, when those networks are detected as a foreign network, that is when they appear in the foreign addresses. Yeah. It, it, Whatever devices it, you see it, up here, it, it's it, not it, necessary it, that these people are present overseas or anything. They could be someone living down your street. There could be someone within the state, within the country, wherever. Yeah, is, 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 is one of these not it's you? Is one of these not you, though? You, no. So where are you in this list? In this list, I am nowhere. So, so, so I, I can't see a foreign address for you? No. Even though you're connected? 
I am not connected to your IP address. Of course you we are. We are just sharing your you, computer screen. Of course you are. No, I'm not. So, so we, which which one of these is you? James, we are not connected to your IP address. We are just connected to your computer screen. I can just see your screen. I am not having a connection on your IP address. Or else I would have been getting your passwords and everything as well. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, sh should we go for the one year then? Okay. Yeah, what level... What level te technician did you say? You said you were level 3 or something, weren't you? I am a 3 level, correct. Where did you do your certification? Sorry? Where did you do your certification? Got it from Cisco. Yeah, yeah no, 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 that, that's Cisco, it's different. Your Microsoft, says, your MSC certification, where did you do that? You can get it from Cisco as well. Yeah, they train you. Yeah, yeah. So where did you do, where did you do that? That was in California. Oh, you're in California. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I used to be. I used to live in Long Beach down yeah. by uh, earlier. So wh where were you in California? Oh, okay. I am in Mountain View. Wow, that's not very far away. That's wonderful. Where are you from? Originally from from Long Beach, but uh, now we're in, now we're in South Carolina. Oh, okay. So you're enjoying the weather? Yeah, yeah, well, it's not as nice as Long Beach. <laughs> oh. All right. So, James, tell me that you would like to receive the legal documents from the technicians on this email itself, yeah. or do you want to provide me a different yeah. one? No, the funeral address is great, yeah. Okay. And can you tell me the best phone number to call you back once everything is fixed out? Yeah, sure thing. It's um, 803... Two seven mm -hmm. two seven six five zero zero zero. That's that's the business. That's the business telephone number. We're we're, we're funeral directors. All right, uh, James. I would also request you please don't use your mouth. No, I'm just. I'm sorry. It's it's on my knee. It's, it's just. Uh, I'll put it down there. Okay. And also, I would request you, please go ahead and type in your billing address up here. Can yeah. you type it in for me? Yeah, sure. Get the keyboard. Oh. The keyboard's sitting on the side, it's on the floor here. So, James, uh, currently you're paying the amount for the one-time fixation, that is $350, and along with that, a one year of network protection. The total amount will be 550 okay? Yeah, that's not too bad. And along with that, you don't have to pay any tax, so don't worry. That'll <laughs> be fine. Uh, do, do not have to pay the, uh, the, the the South Carolina taxes? Oh, no. These securities and everything, they are completely tax-free. So you don't have to pay taxes. Wow. How, how did you manage that? I mean, you're, you're in California. Surely, that is something which... Surely we should be paying either... That is something which the company itself manages. Yeah, should, like that is something which is in the hands of company. Yeah, I they provide you benefits yeah, like that because already you're paying a lot of amount. Yeah, but and I don't even want to, if people add tax up to that. Yeah, but I don't want to get in, in into bother with the with the IRS. Oh, of course you won't be getting any kind of trouble. That's that's my guarantee. Are you sure? Because I, I'm not paying South Carolina taxes and I'm not paying California taxes. California taxes seven seven point five percent. I am hundred percent sure. I am 100% sure you would not face any kind of trouble, all right? Yeah. Uh, James, uh, which, uh, like, how do you spell your last name? Uh, is this one correct or is this one correct? It's W-H-I-T-A-C-K-E-R. I've spelled it wrong, look. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Sorry. All right, that's okay. And what will be your mode of payment? Will you be using a debit card or a credit card? Well, I won't be using any card. So, how will you be paying the technicians? Well, I won't. So, you won't be paying them? No, because it's a complete scam. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.